What's up guys and welcome back. So today we have uh, again another one quick but interesting video about how you can execute your PowerShell scripts on Windows machines through the Zabbix agent. So without doing any, I don't know, deep dive customization. So we'll be just using a Zabbix agent, which you can install from the MSI on your any Windows machine, maybe like XP, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows Server, or whatever, and using Zabbix server. And for our testing uh, setup, what we have here is I have a Zabbix agent on my Windows machine, which I'm using here. And I have a Zabbix server running from the Docker containers on my Oracle Linux 8 uh, server. And the version is 6.2 alpha 2. It's basically built from a trunk. But again, uh, if you have some older versions, it will also 100% work. So it's uh, not like something new. So you should not have a trouble with that. First of all, what we need, we need, of course, uh, some sort of uh, PowerShell script that we actually want to execute, right? So that's why I've placed it in the same directory as my Zabbix agent, which is uh, C program files uh, Zabbix agent. That's the default location if you install it from MSI. And uh, I've just uh, basically took a script from an internet, it's not mine, there's the outer, the Sean Bradley. And uh, this simple four line script, what it gives to us, it gives to us a uh, count of the days since the last Windows update was run on this particular host where we will be executing this PowerShell script. So we end up with the situation when we have a script and we have a Zabbix. So how can we actually combine these two together. There is no such thing as a specific dedicated uh, item or, or item key to actually um, to actually execute the script, but we can always create a user parameter. And to create a user parameter, what we have to do is open the agent config file. I will use uh, notepad++ uh, plus plus. and here you can search for user parameter, user parameter. And uh, we're looking for this one. And as you can see, I've already actually added um, the user parameter as it should look for us. So we are defining that it is user parameter equals, then we need to, um, we need to figure something out how we will call the this user parameter and later we will use this in the Zabbix front end here, when it will be actually creating host. So let's say if we right now create a host, uh, Windows PowerShell, call it, let's say, add it to the Windows servers group. And uh, there is an agent interface with IP 168.56.1 and add this. So where is our PowerShell host? So we need to create a new item and the item type will be either the Zabbix agent or the Zabbix agent active, depends on the direction, how you want to go. So if it's going to be Zabbix agent then the server will be connecting to the agent requesting the data. If it's agent active, then agent will be initiate, initiating communication. So I will go with the Zabbix agent and we can call it like uh, <coughs> Windows PowerShell uh, script test. And then the most important part here is the key. So the key is exactly this part, which comes after equals user parameter equals and till the comma. So this is identifier that when the Zabbix will be actually actually executing this key on the agent, which of course, if you would open just the documentation of the Zabbix, you would not find any key like days since last update, especially with like uppercase and lowercase. So we figure that out. And after the comma, there is the stuff which actually is going to be executed by this key by this item. So we're running the PowerShell executable with no profile and bypassing execution policy. This is a mandatory thing when you're executing the PowerShell scripts from the Zabbix and minus file and then location of our PowerShell script that we actually run one to run. And in my case, it is uh, the C program file Zabbix agent PowerShell dot PS one. That's it. So we can save this. 
save the save the configuration file after you added user parameters and then you actually need to um <clears throat> you need to restart the zabbix agent so to do that just open the services msc and go back to the zabbix agent and just uh, restart it so then when the agent restarts it actually knows that there is such user parameter which is called days since last update and it will be able to respond to it so what we do now is just add this one and we can reload the configuration cache right now in my docker environment and to do that we will actually make this a little bit bigger uh, docker ps so we need to find out the container id of our zabbix server which is this one so then it's like docker exec minus id and zabbix underscore server minus r config cache reload so we reloaded the configuration cache and right now um, our zabbix server knows that it actually has to check for this item so we can actually even do the execute now to speed this up even more so click apply multiple times there we go we see already availability uh, icon became green green so status is available which means that we actually received some sort of the data and we can go to the monitoring latest data search for windows powershell click apply and there we go we received a value 25 so we have 25 days without um, received updates on this windows machine which could be actually true and aside of this like before actually checking something in the front end you can always also check from the command line because this is just a regular zabbix agent item despite the fact that it is user parameters so we defined this new key and to test it, we can use a Zabbix get where we need to define minus s, which is uh, IP address of our Zabbix agent 192.168.56.1 and minus key, which is a key that we actually want to execute. And the key in our case, we can take it from, um, from the front end was not this one, not the event log, but uh, the PowerShell. There we go. Uh, day since last update so just copy paste it here and there we go we get the same result 25 the only things that we actually need to think about when we're creating these customized user parameters that are running the powershell scripts is first of all the timeout because you probably already noticed so this is taking like not too much but if we add time in front so it's half of the second 054 yeah constantly 054 but if let's say we would use a native item of the zabbix agent let's say system dot cpu load see it takes 0 0.003 seconds so this one is much more efficient than our powershell script and we have a very simple one powershell script so you must always be careful when you are running some sort of scripts through the zabbix agent make sure that they are not running uh, for too long and uh, also don't forget that let's say if we open again our Zabbix agent config file this one there is such thing as a timeout parameter which by default is 3 and the maximal value is 30 you could increase it to the 30 but it is not actually recommended so it is better to avoid it therefore if you want to monitor your PowerShell scripts um, with a Zabbix make sure that they're actually running let's say less than 10 15 seconds if they're running more than like 30 seconds or something like that you won't be able to monitor them through the zabbix agent so you'll have to use let's say the zabbix sender utility to actually send the values to the zabbix server right so that's about it for a quick lesson for today so thank you guys for watching see you later as usually click those like buttons and goodbye